So when did you start coming out with your own calls, Wayne? Uh, we went on the market in 82. Uh, we, we went in the market with three di two diaphragm calls. We added a third later. Uh, nobody had nobody knew how to, to use the diaphragm call for elk. They had figured it out back east for turkey, but no one had ever done it for elk. But wild turkey makes a key key run, especially when they're lost in the fall. I'm sure yeah. you've heard it. So that little, that, just that little whistle that turkey makes uh, when you're out west and you hear elk bugling that, just that beautiful flute, like, God, what was that ever? <laughs> so just, just a nice, easy bugle and learned it from a turkey, from a turkey doing a kiki run. And, and my Uncle Harvey taught me how to uh, actually do kiki runs on slates, that sort of thing. But boy, when this was discovered, every, everybody could do kiki runs and yelps. And uh, we were fortunate that we made it out west before the rest of the crew did. And we were the first ones to be able to do this. So that's kind of a history of how we got to where we're at. And I used to manage an archery shop in Fort Collins, Colorado, Northern Colorado. And I remember the Wayne Carlton calls just flying off the shelf during elk season because really you helped guys kill elk. Yeah. You know what I mean? The calls that you develop help people call in elk and help people be successful not only with turkey, but with elk and with all kinds of stuff. And really, you're only limited to how much you want to learn. That's I mean, exactly. you know, coyotes. Yeah. You know, I do howls and I do all kinds of stuff out there, you know, an alarm bark. You can literally call so many different species in with a diaphragm. But if you don't mind, Wayne, mean, you've got some new products out this year. Um, this one's called the... Uh, green weenie for the, some reason. The green weenie, which cracks me up. Um, <laughs> blow the green weenie. So it gets louder and louder for a longer distance. I'm going to tone it down. Yep, when you get them in close. So are you, are you doing, you, you're, you're, you're playing that right there. I keep one of those in my pocket all the time. And here's the other one I like in my pocket. I would have made it. That sounds that's so a custom, sweet. That's, that's a custom that Mark did for you. <laughs> and I, man, when they start getting in close, being able to tone that down yeah. and sound like a cow or a calf or literally a whole herd, you know, this is another nice, just a really nice call. And with that big open bevel on the back, talk to the viewers that are either going to go elk hunting or maybe elk hunters now, but want to learn a little bit more about how to call or how to use this call. Well, this call is actually a custom call and uh, Mark, my son, you kind of, it's easy to kind of overlook and think about I, 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 when really it's we, 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 we're all together in this kind of a deal. Yes, sir. So while I was out blowing the horn, so to speak, promoting Carlton's calls back in the day, Mark, my son, was a young guy just learned trying to figure out where he fit. And uh, for years, he was making these things and he was playing with the, the body of, this is called the soundboard, it's back, and that's, of course, that's your read. But he had learned how to put the two together and sand them down, so it was just a very, as you just demonstrated, very sweet call. And for close in, it is absolutely great. But um, we call it, that's in the custom line, and uh, Mark makes all those, tests them all, shades them down, and uh, that's what you got. Now, I'm excited to have you here at camp. I want you to blow a bugle for me. I want you to walk people through the steps. Now, as an elk guide, as two elk guides, you've got a lot mm -hmm. of elk hunters. I've been guiding elk hunters for a long time too, 26 years now I've been guiding. Um, you've got a couple different tubes on the market. Now, I'll be honest, I like them both, but I kind of tend to go to the smaller one every once in a while because it's easier to carry. Easier to carry and doesn't sound so much like a snare drum. Yes, sir. And, well, and, and, and you don't, when I'm walking through brush, right. this one just doesn't hit brush. Now, don't get me wrong, I think this has its place, but if you would, I'd like people to see the master here call with this one 
end with this one and talk a little bit about both of them. Well, the fact of the matter is, there's several good points about this call. One thing, it's easy to carry. Yes, sir. And being easy to carry means you want to carry it. You're not trying to put it somewhere. But more importantly, as you get better on that diaphragm read, which you're already great, but people that learn how to call, they get better and better and better to the point they are aggressive, uh, they're overpowering to the animal they're calling to. They're intimidating they're trying, they, the bull. They, exactly. So instead of aggravating them with this, they're intimidating them with that. Right. So that's a great long distance call. But let me tell you, when, when the action starts up, I want this right here. So uh, just let me blow the two. And, and I won't put too many growls in there. You can well, make it. And I think you made a great point. And, and I think it's important what Wayne just said. And, and I want to make sure everybody catches that. I usually go with a shrill, high pitch, sometimes just a two tone. I'm trying to sound like a young, immature bull when yeah. I'm guiding clients. Because not only do I want to call in the cows, I want to call in the young bulls and the big bulls. Exactly. And elk are just like us. I'm not going to pick a fight with a guy that's twice as big as I am. I'm just not going to do it. Now, if it's a little fella, I may pick on him a little bit. But, but I don't want to intimidate when I'm calling. I don't want to intimidate those bulls. I want them to come in and feel like they can take my cows, they can beat me up. If you sound like the biggest bull on the mountain, you can intimidate a lot of elk. Uh, really, folks, if, if you're thinking about calling, a small, it, it looks like it's so insignificant. You say, God, I need something bigger. I mean, I'm, I'm after a 900 pound bull elk. Uh, you are gonna call in tons more with this because it's, it's so versatile from a young bull to even a deep, just listen to this. Or, so how do you make that little tube sound so big? Isn't that awesome? So and now blow this for just just to give it a comparison. Is your paint dry? Yes, sir. You're good. Your paint's dry. <laughs> Like that. I love it. Or just you can. <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little trick there. I like that. You kind of got your mouth open around the the entrance of the of the hole there, and so you let the air escape out both sides. And it gives you yet another tone. Try that. Are you putting your finger in your mouth? No, I was just pointing to it. In case I forgot. <laughs> so now if you want that a deeper run, it just <laughs> you can just <laughs> We want to go right here. We're going to whip your butt. Well, a lot of times I just like that small. Yeah. It's a little high pitch, and like when you watch them running cows. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll still rip bugles, but it's a low, high, you know what I mean? Man, they're right. going, they're just letting them know. And, and another thing I think is important, you can sound like a huge bull, biggest bull in the mountain, or a young bull, but a lot of times, a soft, soft bugle will get it done. There are times I think, I, we, I want to sometimes shock them into bugling. But there Almost like a shock, shock goblin a turkey. Exactly. Okay. So, but you, there's so many notes there. Sometimes if you just play the tune, they like that better. Or it's like. <laughs> nice and easy. Sounds awesome. And, I, I do think you can bugle too loud yeah. at times. So you would agree with that. So you can use something small like that for close in. You're trying to relocate the bull. Do something like that so you, you're not pushing them way out in front of you. 
And then if he bugles, depending upon where he bugles, then you can go to something like that if you want to, or you can charge this up. So, Wayne, there's people watching right now that want to know where they get your diaphragms, because you've got all kinds of different and unique diaphragms, including ones. And what do you, what do you call on the, uh, and I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know technically the name for it, because you have this unique metal band right here to help it sit in people's mouths. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'd like to call with a diaphragm, but it floats around. I'm afraid I'm yeah. going to choke on it and do this, do that. You've kind of fixed that with this. So explain that. We did that. That's been uh, in my mouth, so I don't know if you want to pop that in your mouth, just so you know. <laughs> we did that, so for a couple of reasons. One of them, it does place the collar in your mouth. Uh, s second most important, it, that latex, when you blow it, your tongue's on the underside. We can show this close up later. But then that air is going through there continuously, correctly, time after time after time. So, so I'll get it easier for people that have never blown a diaphragm or even people that have difficulties blowing a diaphragm. Because there's a lot of guys that want to, but they say they have issues with it. This solves a lot of that. That, that solves the problem. Uh, you, can, you can still bend that a little bit if you like. I wouldn't bend it too much. But now instead of, if you have the latex going across here without that, then that latex is going to, the sound may come off the edge on either side, but now it comes dead center in the middle, right? Every time. Right in the middle. So uh, now you don't have to worry about that. And what if do you, you call it? And this, this is called our arch, uh, we call it the arch collar, we call it the rip it call, depending upon what you're talking about. But it's, all, all it is is an arch over from one side to the other with a tone slot pressed in, in the, right in the center of it to, to give you all the sounds as you, whether it be turkey or elk, either one, don't make any difference. And when you first start learn, trying to learn how to use the diaphragm call, don't blow it real hard, just blow it nice and easy like this. <laughs> so you can get a lot of sounds off of it. Just as you said earlier, how much practice you put into it. Yes, sir. Wayne, seriously, okay. thank you for coming out, man. You, you, okay. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. A lot of people's first call they ever held was a Wayne Carlin yeah. call, and it is really special for, for us to have you out here, and I appreciate it. It's our pleasure to be here, I can, I can tell you.